What's hiding underneath things can be scary. Underwater, under your bed, especially what's under your carpet. Except when you get new carpet from Carpet One Floor and Home. After tearing up your old carpet, they'll vacuum and apply Healthinex antimicrobial to your subfloor, disinfecting and killing mold, mildew, and any remaining general awfulness. Carpet One Floor and Home goes the extra mile to protect you, your family, and your home. Carpet One Floor and Home in Columbia, making your home beautiful, guaranteed. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Tuesday, November the 30th. I want to introduce you to a couple of guys making their first appearance on the show. But I hope not the last. Uh, Jeff Holsom and Jack Meisenbach. Good to have both of you here. Thank you. And you're representing Citizens Climate Lobby, Build Political Will for a Livable World. That's a... That's a big title. It is indeed, Paul, but we appreciate the chance to be on here to talk to your listeners and your TV viewers about what, what it is. What it I, does. I'm, I'm really happy to he- have you here. You know, we were, we were talking before we came on the air here about the seriousness of global warming. And I feel that there still is a fair percentage of people, not just in this country, but around the world, that think global warming is a hoax, and it is not a hoax. Uh, and when you, when you realize that, it, it's almost frightening. What, what is the citizens' lobby, and, and what are you trying to do with this? Uh, basically, there are two, two functions. We, we first of all try to educate people. There's actually a special part of our organization that does education. But the one we're talking about mostly today is lobbying. And we try to build political will for a livable world by seeking effective solutions to climate problems. We have chapters in every state, nearly every congressional district in this country, over 50 chapters, over 50 countries around the world. Uh, Here in Missouri, we have them in in St. Louis, Kansas City, Kirksville, St. Joseph, Columbia, where Jack is from, Jefferson City, where I'm from, and Rolla. Why are you personally concerned about climate change, either one of you? Um, I'll, I'll start. Um, I'm concerned about the future uh, environment for my grandchildren, our, as are a lot of other people are worried about that. Yeah. We were talking, we're old enough to where we won't probably see the worst effects, well, but you know, our grandchildren will, yeah, yeah. and our great-grandchildren. That's what we were talking about before the program started. I said, well, I'm, I'm 76 years old. I may not see all of the results of climate change. And you corrected me. You said, no, I think if you live another seven or eight or nine years, you are going to see the change. Yes, It's coming are. that fast. Yep. And here's why I'm saying, one of the reasons I'm going to give you a little data here. According to a United Nations report that was just released in October, um, Climate change is advancing much faster than, than anybody predicted. CO2 levels in the atmosphere, carbon dioxide levels, have reached 420 parts per million. I can remember a few years ago it was 380. If, and the problem with that, that is a 3 million year high. A Think 3 million year high. High, yeah. And... This puts the world way off track in addressing climate change in, a, in an effective manner. We are behind the curve. And also, scientists have said that the world needs to have its emissions this decade. Have them, you know, 50% less than pre-industrial levels. Um, if we're going to have any chance whatsoever of containing global warming... Uh, to 1.5 degrees Celsius. That's the number everybody keeps throwing out. That's over pre-industrial levels, okay? Yeah. And most of, the, most of the parts per million in the air right now, we did that with our industrial revolution. Yeah. That's how far back that goes. Uh, and if we go above 1.5, that's going to trigger more extreme storms and climate events. Now, we've seen those extreme storms. That's so what, what, what are... Are you doing about it, or what can we do about it to really make a significant difference? Okay. Price carbon. What's that? Put a price on carbon. 
Okay, yeah. you're talking about carbon pricing. And what yes. do you mean by carbon pricing? It would be a way to reduce emissions and help us transition to a renewable energy system such as solar and wind. Uh, there's a bill in Congress right now called the Energy Innovation Act, H.R. 2307. And under that bill, there would be a charge of $15 per ton on a fossil fuel equivalent when it's extracted from the, uh, I'm sorry, on, on, a, on, on fossil fuel when the carbon dioxide equivalent is $15 a ton. So for example, in the case of coal, if you remember back to your chemistry classes, one part of carbon, two parts of oxygen make carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So a ton of coal would be charged $45 mm -hmm. per ton of CO2 equivalent when it burns, which would help us greatly transition away from coal toward renewables such as solar and wind. Uh, and what's that going to do to the price of gasoline? Excellent question. Yet you, you could end up having to fill up it costing, you were saying, 80 to $100 for a tank of gas. That is going to be the incentive then for people yeah. to switch over to electric vehicles. Right. Do you see that happening? I do because um, it's not only the, the carbon fee, and it initially isn't going to drive the price of gas up that much, but every year it increases. And every year that more, fewer and fewer people are driving electric cars and burning gasoline, the price of gas, you know, it's just going to, the, the infrastructure to support that is going to cost a fortune for fewer people using it, and the prices is going to go up. But it, this is all a, a market-based solution to this problem. You know, people, people react to how much things cost them. And if they, if they see that I have a cheaper alternative over here, you know, with my transportation, with my home, everything, that will drive the solution. Yeah. The important thing is we need to keep in mind, though, is the fact this is the only world that we have. <laughs> yes. Right. This is the only world that we have. <laughs> That's right. Right now, we are making somewhat of a mess. But there is a chance to turn it around. I, we're almost out of time. You guys are going to have to come back again. But do you feel that enough can be done to reverse climate change? We've got 30 seconds here. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the carbon fee and dividend we're proposing would be enough to get us to the president's goal of 50% reduction in emissions by 2030. Okay. That will make a huge difference. If people want more information on this or they want to be a part of the citizens' climate lobby, what do they do? Well, they go to cclusa.org, and that's our organization website. Okay. And do please join us. Okay. It's CCL. USA.org. Right. Go to that website. You can get all the information you need. You can join there and you can put in your two cents and share your thoughts. Help us. All right, guys, will you come back again? Love to. Sure. Okay. I really feel it's important. We're out of time for today. If there's something you would like to hear or see, I'd love to hear from you. Drop me an email. That's pepperp at missouri.edu. And when you go out and about today, be nice to each other and smile. <laughs>